now that Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib has been, uh, has been granted permission under humanitarian reasons to come visit her family in her central West Bank village, it seems like she will not be coming after all, based on a statement she just made on Twitter. So that is the latest twist to the story, and I'll <coughs> read you these two tweets. About 30 minutes ago, she said, when I won, it gave the Palestinian people hope that someone will finally speak the truth about the inhumane conditions. I can't allow the state of Israel to take away that light by humiliating me and use my love for my city, her grandmother, to bow down to their oppressive and racist policies. Silencing me and treating me like a criminal is not what she, her grandmother, wants for me. It would kill a piece of me. I have decided that visiting my grandmother mother under these oppressive conditions stands against everything I believe in, fighting against racism, oppression, and injustice. So after being allowed in for humanitarian reasons, it seems like Congresswoman Tlaib has decided not to come, she says, given the restrictions that Israel placed against her and on this visit. Her family in the West Bank, whom we spoke with a short time ago, including her uncle, urged her not to come unless it was as a fully welcomed, respected U.S. Congresswoman. Here's what he had to say to us earlier. We are against the conditional visit of Rashida to Palestine. Rashida has the right to visit Palestine as a Palestinian, regardless of being a congresswoman, as any citizen with a U.S. passport has the right to come and visit their family without any conditions or pressure. So now it's a question of where does this story go from here? It seems Talib may have a final decision. She will not be coming, but we will certainly still be monitoring how this goes. We also have not seen yet a reaction from President Donald Trump on Israel's decision to allow her to visit, even if it is just under humanitarian conditions. It seems it was that tweet that uh, left Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu very little wiggle room here. He has never publicly gone against Trump, and he wasn't about to start doing it now. But again, another turn here with this moment, uh, announcement just moments ago that Talib will not be coming after being granted permission earlier today. Okay, Oren, I appreciate all that reporting from Jerusalem. Let's talk about this more broadly. CNN political commentator David Swordlick uh, joins me now along with our political analyst, Sun Ming Kim. Good morning to you both. And Sung, let morning, me begin Bob. with you. I mean, the, look, look, you even have the pro-Israel group APAC, which frequently sides with the Trump administration on this stuff, opposing uh, the president's support for Israel, barring uh, Congresswoman Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib from going. What should we draw from that? Well, let's look at, let's step back a little bit. And we know that the president and the Republican party writ large has been trying to prop up um, Congresswoman Omar and Congressman Tlaib and some of the some of the other liberal Democratic freshmen for some time um, as part of the squad. And we saw that the most vividly uh, when the president um, said last month or tweeted last month in a very clearly racist comment that these uh, th these two women or these two congresswomen um, and others should go back to their home country, even though they are U.S. citizens. And now the president has also and the Republican Party has trying to, been, trying to stir these divisions and kind of highlight these divisions within the Democratic Party when it comes to Israel for a very long time. And we've seen a lot of these contentious fights, particularly within the House Democratic Caucus, about what um, Congresswoman Omar and Congressman mm -hmm. Tlaib have said on the issue. But what's mm -hmm. interesting here, and you kind of hit it uh, with the APAC point, mm -hmm. is that by the president um, going as far as he is and advocating and supporting Israel, blocking uh, blocking these two, uh, two, these two congresswomen from entering the country, it is again a unifying the Democratic Party on this mm -hmm. issue. And what we're being told is that what the president is doing here is that they are giving the Democratic Party a pretty solid ground to stand and say, you mm -hmm. know, the lawmakers should not be blocked from the United States just based solely on free speech. And you're hearing mm -hmm. that consternation, too, from uh, Republican lawmakers. And Marco Rubio has been out so, there tweeting so let's, and saying let's read say that. that it was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Let's read that from Marco Rubio, because I think the whole context of it, David, especially given how outspoken yeah. he's been on the anti anti-BDS movement, the op-eds he's written over the past six months. Here's what uh, Marco Rubio writes. I disagree 100 percent with Representative Salib and Omar on Israel and I'm the author of the anti-BDS bill that we passed in the Senate. But denying them entry to Israel is a mistake. Being blocked is what they really hoped for all along in order to bolster their attacks against the Jewish state. Is he right? Does he make an important point that the president should consider here? Uh, yeah, I think that Senator Rubio is right there, Poppy, and I think that this issue in the last 24 hours has put uh, the Israeli government and President Trump on one side of the issue, at least for the present tense, and 
p members of Congress in both parties, as well as, as you and Sung Min said, uh, members of Jewish American organizations across the political spectrum, from J Street to APAC, on the other side of the issue, at least for the moment, because people are looking at this and saying, as Senator Rubio did, that even though he disagrees with Congresswoman Taleb and Congresswoman Omar, on the BDS movement, he disagrees with them on how to move forward with the Israel-Palestinian peace process. Mm -hmm. Clearly there are major divisions. He does not agree that two sitting members of the U.S. Congress, a co-equal branch of government, should be denied the right to take uh, a, a fully accredited trip, not just on humanitarian grounds, to Israel, uh, particularly when you uh, when you look at the fact that these are high-profile members of Congress and they are, you know, they're not, you know, uh, bureaucrats or private citizens, they are elected officials here for our government. But but clearly, David, the administration, the president has made a political calculation in this and yeah. has thought, does this help me? Does this help my base, etc.? cetera? Uh, is there something that you believe he's missing there on that front? Well, President Trump specifically and Republicans in general have made an issue about hugging tight to the policies of the Israeli government under Prime Minister Netanyahu. And I think that has actually been marginally successful for them uh, in general terms. Mm -hmm. In this case, though, it, it strikes me that it might be have a slight surprise to uh, both the White House and maybe to some in the Israeli government that mm -hmm. there was such a swift unanimity of response, again here, from Democrats and Republicans and from the range of Jewish American organizations. Again, uh, just in the last hour, uh, John had on uh, former Senator Lieberman, who is uh, considered one of the staunchest supporters of Israel, saying, yeah. no, look, if you want to be a strong U.S.-Israel partnership, if Israel wants to look strong and democratic in this case, you don't tell uh, members of Congress they can't come, you invite them in and try and mm. work on the issue from there. And I think that's where we are, although this is obviously changing rather quickly. The fact yes. that uh, Congresswoman Taleb um, said now that she won't accept the humanitarian visa suggests to me that she's going to proceed on the basis of a member of Congress and a Palestinian American leader rather mm -hmm. than as a uh, private citizen with a grandmother over there. Yeah, that was an interesting reversal because she had sent the note last night asking for the, the, right. the, the admission on those grounds saying I won't talk about these things and now this morning she sees it differently. Thank you both. I'm sorry tied on time because of that breaking news. David Swerdlick, Summing Kim, have a nice weekend.